Uh, good day, my friends. It's uh, Ray back at Cigar Climatology. Uh, today, or real quick, we're going to go over some of the items necessary to um, install and finish one of my Cigar Climatology kits. Um, we don't really need a vast number of tools, but there are several things uh, that you will need in order to complete the kit. Um, a drill will be one of them because typically we're going to be drilling through the backside of the cooler to allow access from the wires from the inside to the outside. And I do not have an IO junction box handy for you to look at. So, uh, um, but uh, that's the box that, uh, that we use essentially as a junction or as a cover. To, uh, to bring the wires from the inside to the outside and, and vice versa. So we'll need one of those. Um, typically I supply a piece of uh, conduit um, that's uh, married to a flange and uh, that conduit is three quarters of an inch, uh, it's three quarters of an inch PVC meaning that the hole is 29 millimeters or one and one eighth diameter. So a one and one eighth diameter hole saw is uh, is is definitely necessary. Um, that is, of course, unless I use a smaller piece of conduit, which is something that you know I might tell you about, or um, um, you know we might have discussed uh, in in some you know in in some uh, particular circumstances where we just need the smaller conduit. Uh, this gives us enough room to uh, to pass the wires back and forth without uh, without crowding them. Now, um, typically we also drill a hole or use a hole saw to put a hole in the back cover. There might be a back cover that covers the compressor area and there are a couple of options there. Uh, we can either remove the cover completely or what we can do is we can, we can drill a hole through those. Now again, um, I like to have plenty of room to work so, uh, so typically I supply this bushing for that hole and um, this would keep the wires from getting chafed um, against the, the, uh, the, the very thin or very sharp metal so that they don't short out. And uh, if that's the case, uh, what we use is this 1 and 3 8 uh, 35 millimeter hole saw. That, uh, that will go ahead and fit this bushing just fine. Now, um, again, you don't necessarily need to get both of these hole saws or if I understand some people in some countries have these are extremely expensive or difficult to find um, you can go ahead and uh, look and if they're really pricey uh, these are not very expensive uh, for me even with a arbor uh, they're probably around 20 bucks um, so if you need me to acquire any of these tools and you need me to supply them uh, in the kit all you would need to do is do is let me know um, you also, we have a number of nuts and bolts obviously in the kit. Um, I use a lot of nylon fasteners and I do like these socket head type nylon fasteners. This uh, particular fastener, um, this guy uses a 964 um, Allen head. Okay, so one of those would be, uh, would be useful to you. Uh, now again, a lot of these um, a lot of these these fasteners, uh, especially the nylon ones, can almost be done finger tight. Okay, usually I don't tighten them to the to the point where they strip because, of course, they can strip. So um, lot, many times you can just get in there with your fingers and you can undo them. So you don't necessarily need uh, the driver if uh, if you don't want to go get it. A lot of the smaller fasteners that I use. Let's see if I have something handy. I got a whole box of them here. Um, oh, here, here's one. Is uh, is a very small stainless steel button head fastener, and uh, that's the same thing. That's also an Allen head, and these guys are a 332 Allen. Um, I use these in a lot of uh, in in a lot of instances in the kit uh, to mount items like this to the cooler back. Uh, they're very low profile, and um, rather than Phillips, which sometimes can get difficult to grab in plastic. Um, even though these are a little bit more expensive uh, and may be a little bit more difficult for you to find a wrench for, especially in another country, these are 332 and I use a lot of these. Um, the nuts 
whether they are nylon or nylock or um, uh, have a uh, lock washer attached, etc. Almost all of these are number eight screws, and um, the corresponding nut for a number eight screw, uh, for a number eight screw is eleven thirty twos. Okay, so usually an eleven thirty two wrench of some sort. Uh, something like this will take care of uh, just about all of your all of your needs with the kit. Um, you can typically buy these separately at a hardware store. You can buy a short one if you want, um, but I buy a deep one and I use one of these little hand tightener things. You, you don't need uh, a ratchet or, or or something more sophisticated because most of the stuff is only hand tight. They're they're very very small screws. And uh, obviously, if you put a bunch of torque on them, you're, you're just going to strip them, or you're just going to break something that they mount to. Okay, so uh, not terribly sophisticated, not super expensive. You need a set of wire cutters and strippers. That's going to be very important. Um, you're going to need a soldering iron, and you're going to need some solder uh, for electrical. Okay, now I don't expect you to solder formally really wires together alright so that would be kind of a pain in the neck and I don't expect you to do that I use a lot of these lever nut type um, uh, type terminals and um, with them typically you would strip about 10 millimeters or about mm, half an inch three-eighths of an inch worth of uh, worth of uh, the wire insulation and what I do is I tin these wires uh, so I heat them up and I apply solder to them. That's what I want the soldering iron for. And, and you can see what it does is it joins the wires together and makes them so that there's not frayed wires. Now you don't have to do this if you don't want, but I do highly recommend it. Everything that I supply in the kit that I've wired has been tinned. It, it takes a little bit of extra time um, and of course ultimately you pay for that uh, because it takes me time to tin every wire. But, uh, but every wire that, that I've landed inside the kit will be tinned. It, uh, it prevents corrosion on the wire and it keeps, uh, it keeps an electronic contact or an electrical contact much better than an untinned wire. Um, so when you feed those into any of these types of terminals, um, they latch firmly and you don't have wires you know, uh, kind of splaying out and going different directions, perhaps, perhaps touching other wires. Um, so that's that's what I recommend. Um, I use a very simple, this is a Klein Tools uh, wire cutter and stripper. I probably have a half a dozen of them. Um, and they're very handy. These things are available at big box stores for about 12 bucks. Uh, sometimes you might need to reach in and grab something. I very rarely use needle nose pliers, but sometimes I do have them. Um, most of the back assemblies, uh, what I really like is I, I really like square drives here, but I, that frustrates some people. So uh, I've just gone to a straight Phillips head uh, type driver here, and um, it's just a Phillips number two. Uh, I don't have one here on the desk, but uh, so a regular Phillips number two screwdriver um, or a driver if, if you like to use them. And uh, I do like to use them. I use an impact driver for many things as you've probably seen in some of the videos, but you have to be very, very careful because you obviously don't want to strip the fasteners. They're very, very quick for disassembling things, and the speed's very important to me. Um, but when assembling, many times I will even use the driver to get it partially in and then tighten the rest of it by hand. These, uh, these drivers just switch, switch the heads on and off, which is very convenient to me. You don't necessarily need anything like that. Again, a regular uh, number two uh, Phillips and a, a even a standard Allen wrench or a small Allen wrench set which might cost you four or five dollars um, will typically do for you uh, inside inside the set uh, or for the kit. Now this uh, these I make for you and I supply with the kit. Um, if you've already watched the video about mounting the back um, in that video I grabbed a couple of random just just random blocks that that get left over sometimes from machining things in the shop and uh, these are nominally three quarters of an inch thick so I'll sometimes grab just about anything that will add up to what uh, to how I want to space something and use it but in order to make this easy for you I uh, I make these blocks for you 
there are two of them in the kit. Please don't throw them away. Uh, there is a radius side. The radius side would go against the radius back of the cooler, like this, like so. And then there would be one for the other side as well. I'm sorry, that would go like this. So uh, these guys are one and a half inch on the short side and they are two inches on the long side. One of the reasons why I make them two inch because this particular model cooler is going to use a is going to use a fan that will be mounted in this area. Let me grab one for you real quick. Oh, where did I put it? Hmm, can't seem to find it. Okay, well that doesn't matter because I can just use this as an example. Um, it's going to have a ducted fan which is going to mount right here. All right and almost flush with the top. So this fan has an, an angled portion right here. Let me just show it to you. Uh, this is one that's built, okay, so you know what I'm talking about. All right, so you can see this angled portion. Well, this angled portion of the duct actually goes pretty much flush with the shelf that's that that uh, essentially seals uh, conceals the compressor on the back of the cooler. So let me ditch this. And so what we do is we're going to use this two inch spacer to um, to mount that and I can go into that into in a little bit more detail a little bit later. But again this uh, this was designed to just be an overview of the tools that are necessary just a handful of stuff. You uh, you don't need a lot, and uh, between that and your fingers, you should be in pretty good shape. You know, obviously, if you um, have a razor knife or or you know some miscellaneous hand tools, sometimes uh, they will be handy to you. Uh, but this is pretty much a minimum. This is about all I use most of the time, uh, not to fabricate the kit, but to put a kit together. And, uh, and, and that's really going to be about all that you need. So uh, there's the overview on, uh, on tools for the kit. Um, these are the sizes. This would be an Allen head, an Allen head, and a socket, or small wrench. Um, a singular opened uh, closed end wrench will also do. I have a couple of these small ones that I use a lot of. And, um, and that's about it. So uh, thanks for watching. Those are the tools that are necessary.